Our guest today has only just begun her law firm, but she's been passionate about delivering justice. Welcome to Crossover with me, Harleen Jabal, where we share inspiring stories of entrepreneurs. She's a mother, she's a wife, she's a lawyer, she's living her dream job. Let's welcome Ishi Kalsi of Ishi Kalsi and Company Advocates. So first off, how did you come to choose this profession of being a lawyer? It was actually quite accidental, Helene. Um, you know, most students in high school have career counseling and, you know, um, do certain subjects geared towards what they want to do in the future. But I didn't have any of that. I actually did all three sciences, uh, which to me are very impractical right now okay. um, but uh, you know after I left high school I worked in an insurance company for one year and after that my father said okay it's time for you to get married mm. and for me that marriage um, you know prospect was very scary how old were you at that time? I was 18 okay yes yeah, so it was very scary for me mm -hmm. and my mother said you know what let's do a small course and then after that you can see two three years you mm -hmm. can get married so we went to this uh, college in uh, Parklands called School of Professional Studies. Yes. And uh, from there, I was going through the prospectus. Mm -hmm. And I actually did not even look at the courses they offered. I just looked at the years and picked the longest course that they offered, which happened to be law. To delay your marriage. To delay the marriage, <laughs> because that was at the back of my mind, yeah. a very scary concept. Yeah. So um, I went home and my mother was thinking I was doing actually computers and IT because that was the in thing mm -hmm. at that time. And a day before I was to enroll and register, I just told her, no, I'm doing law because it, it actually took five years in the college. So it's, it was quite accidental. But uh, once I started, there was no giving up. You loved it. I loved it. And there was no looking back. There was no option of failure, especially for my mother. Yeah. Once I chose it, it was, it was what I had to do. So we've known this profession of law. Um, it's so glamorized by the American television series Suits. Is that how you guys operate? No, actually glamorized is the correct word to use, okay. Aline, because what you watch in a TV is very different from reality. Okay. I mean, if you look at something called Suits, it's based on, the whole series is based on um, a, a, a person who's not even qualified to do law. Hmm. So it's actually not what it is in reality. I grew up watching Ali McBeal, which was... <laughs> which oh, is actually a, a, a very comical version of what legal drama is all about. Yes. Uh, but in the court system here, we have certain etiquette that we have to follow. All right. Uh, there's a certain way in which you talk to the court, in which you talk to the, your colleagues. Um, you also have to show certain respect towards your older, um, you know, colleagues. Yeah. So it's very, very respectable profession. Okay. And yeah, you know, it's not what it is on TV. Are we more on the British law? W what's our law? combined of? Well, because we were colonized by the British and a lot of Commonwealth countries are, you know, have a common law, uh, which is based on the British law. But each country has laws which mm. keep on changing, as is Kenya, you know. We have different laws, but yes, it is based on the British law. So what's a typical routine in a court for maybe in your case? Well, court starts at nine o'clock okay. uh, usually. Um, sometimes judges come in late. Mm -hmm. And then it depends on how you're listed in court. Okay. A court matter could have 20, uh, you know, it, a court day could have 20 matters in a day. So one judge sitting could actually have to listen to 20 matters. Wow. Yes, yeah, so you just have to wait your turn. Sometimes it takes the whole morning. Um, we have certain etiquette that we have to follow. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's a typical morning in court. So you wear the whole cloak and is, do we wear wigs? No, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. I, actually, if you watched what was in the Supreme Court yes. last year, yes. um, the robes are only meant to be in the Supreme Court okay. and the Court of Appeal. Oh. In the High Court and Lower Courts, we don't wear it, but we are um, you know, constrained to wear dark suits. Mm -hmm. It has to be a full suit, whether it's a skirt suit or a trouser suit. It cannot be a broken suit. You cannot wear bright colors. You have to wear dark colors. And um, 
as of last year, women were not even allowed to wear stilettos. Uh, so it's basically proper, proper yeah, dressing. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's not a fashion parade. We're yes, finding justice yes. here. It's a very respectable profession. Wow, I'm, I'm, yes. I'm impressed. So when it comes to your clients or your portfolio of clients that you've had, is there any client that is standing out in your mind? You don't need to tell uh, their name, that's okay. But give me a scenario where, um, where you've tried, I'll give you two. Uh, the first one, give me one where everything went absolutely smoothly and you felt like I've done this to my satisfaction and you were happy. Yes, uh, well, you, you know, what really matters in court is your preparedness in court. All right. So when you have enough documentary evidence in court, uh, that's what the court looks at. So you prepare for a case and you say, yes, I have done my best. And then um, it so turns out that your client is very happy. Mm. You have a win-win situation, especially mm. when we are able to amicably agree out of court. Okay. And nowadays the court is, uh, you know, moving towards more mediation-based uh, uh, work instead of, you know, arguing it out in court. So we have a lot of win-win situations. Okay. And there was this time where, you know, I argued a case, and this was at the beginning point of my career. Yeah. And we, it was a very acrimonious divorce. And I actually won custody for the child, so I was very happy about that. Yes. Okay. And now give me a scenario where you tried absolutely everything and your client in this situation was innocent. We're yes. going to go with that yes. one. Yeah, there are lots but of cases. But it just didn't come in your favor. Yes, there are lots of cases. You see, Harleen, whenever you have a situation where there's a versus, X versus okay. Y, there's always a winner and a loser. Okay. So you can't always win. Um, the court looks into very many different factors, including, um, you know, your evidence. Okay. If your evidence and documents are not in order or yes. they're not strong enough, you tend to lose. Um, there have been many situations where you even feel, you know, you want to cry, um, but you, you get up. You, you just fall and you get up again. Yes. So is it correct to say that your law firm is an expert at handling matrimonial cases? I have specialized in matrimonial cases. Right. It's because I worked uh, for a women and children's rights activist for about 10 years before okay. I started my law okay. firm. So yes, that is my stronghold. That is what I'm comfortable in. Uh, but I do other cases as well. Okay. Yes. So if I had to ask you, what is the divorce case rate going on at this moment? Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? Are children suffering at it? I think it's getting worse, very unfortunately. Really? Are people filing for divorce more and more and they quicker? They are, yes. I think um, nowadays people are not ready to tolerate the certain situations at home, okay. especially the younger couples. Okay. So you find after one or two years of marriage, people do want to get out of it. Um, although the law provides that you have to stay in a marriage for three years before getting divorced, All right. a lot of couples, you know, two and a half, three years, and they say that's it. So the divorce rate is increasing. A lot of children are getting, uh, you know, involved and yeah, they're suffering. getting hurt. They're getting yes, yes. So, um, but we try out of court mediation, which makes makes it easier for everybody. Is there a particular reason why they want to file for divorce? Is there some common pattern going on? Usually, it's because they don't want to. They don't know, want to live with each other anymore. Yes, they don't want to compromise. Um, the younger couples want a, a you know, high-end life where it's all fun and games. Mm. Um, a lot of the times, especially in our society, it's interference from the parents. Mm. So we try and mediate as much as possible. Okay. Yes. Okay. So there are so many youngsters watching at this moment, just like you pointed out that you, know, you ended up going to the college and you yes. picked up the uh, law as your profession. So. Is there any worth in being a lawyer in Kenya? Yes, of course. As any profession, there is a worth in, you know, okay. in, in the profession. Uh, but having said that, you know, you have to be ready for what we call unofficial business, um, okay. which is the corruption business. It is huge in the judiciary. It is huge in the industry, um, not only at the higher levels, but also at the lower levels. You, you know, last year we saw, um, you know, a frustrating rate of you know files going missing in the court registry in the lands registries so um you have to deal with that and as it is it's it's everywhere yes you know we try and um, you know do what we can um and yes it is a respectable profession it is something that i would you know encourage the youngsters to get into so when you talk about uh, case files are missing and everything 
Why? What's the problem? Why do these things happen? Why do they mysteriously disappear? Is it that we don't have a, a controlled setup? Because you would assume, being a judiciary, you have to be extremely thorough and transparent. So, where's the leakage? I think it's um, the corruption level. Hadi. Okay. Uh, it's not that files go missing. They're actually hidden by somebody. They're conveniently kept. Conveniently, yes, and misfiled. And so, if you want something done, you have to pay a little bit to get it done. Okay. Yes, and last year was very bad. So, yeah. also, can we say the education of maybe at the clerk level um, and the, what do you call the conscious awakening? If do you think if that improved, there could be a change at some point? Probably it would. Probably it would. But again, it's also um, at the higher level mm -hmm. because if. Uh, you know the magistrates and the judges would be strict enough to say mm -hmm. files should not go missing and files should be brought to court on time then I think it would reduce uh, the level of corruption okay so let's get down to now gender equality is there equality in your profession between the men and women I wouldn't say yes I, I, I think there is a lot of gender inequality um, you find that uh, women, I mean, even if you watch the Supreme Court election petition, yes. a majority of the lawyers that were representing uh, the parties were men. Uh, women were not in the forefront at all. It's because they don't get promoted. It's because there's nobody, you know, pushing them forward. Um, even salaries, you know, you tend to see men getting more salaries. Um, but you see, with, with the advent of social media and uh, women's rights and equality rights, I think the number is decreasing. It is decreasing. So let me ask you, Ishi, you had the option of working with any top law firm in Kenya. Why did you decide to make your own? Um, well, you see, I did have a very good job, Helene. I okay. was actually in a very responsible, demanding job. Okay. I worked for 10 years for a women's rights activist. It was a great job but I decided to start a family All right. and that was what uh, you know just got you need started. flexibility as well I, I needed that balance between family life and All my right. career life All right. and especially because having a young family you know when you do an eight to five job um, your employer sometimes doesn't understand that you need time off you know um, even just for school functions so I needed to take that step so I think you and I need to team up and maybe maybe make that a bill for 2018, <laughs> yes, isn't it? Yes, we should. Yes, we should. So talking about bills, is there anything we need to look at for this year? Yes, Helene. Um, as of December 2017, mm -hmm. there were 15, more than 15 pending bills in Parliament which hadn't been passed. All right. Um, and one of the critical bills that we must, uh, you know, advocate for is one called the Breast uh, Feeding Mothers Bill. Okay. Yes, many people don't know about that. Yeah. It was chaired by someone called Sabina Chege, who was a member of Parliament last year. And uh, this bill actually provides for a compulsory, uh, you know, a compulsory place at any employee's place of work for mothers to bring their children mm -hmm. who are less than six months to breastfeed mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. or to express their milk. Okay. So that is very critical because, you know, any mother knows that the three months maternity period is too short. And it's, it's too short. Um, the compulsory uh, breastfeeding time for any child is six months. So to leave a three month old baby at home is, is very, very, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, very, uh, it's an anxiety period for any mother. Yeah. So this bill actually now uh, provides for employers to provide a safe, hygienic place where mothers can actually breastfeed their children and um, you know express their milk if they need to. So that's a critical bill. Okay. Um, it has reached the committee stage. So right. I really hope you know for 2018 it sees it through. So I think this could be one of the first bills that will break through for more women supported you know elements yes. that are required just like you said you need to pick your kids from school now you go to your employer and say and with the Kenyan traffic yes. if the kid needs to be picked up at 3 30 you literally need to leave your office at 2 sometimes yes. not even at yes. 3 unless your office is really close to the school I think those support levels do need to kick in yes. at some point so how are you balancing yourself right now your mom your wife you've got two kids yes are you in a better position do you feel stronger Yes, I do. Um, you know, that is the exact balance that I was looking for when I opened the law firm. Um, and, you know, it's, it's very, um, you know, it, it's something that brings me absolute joy because, you know, from about 8 o'clock till 3 o'clock, I'm full-time career. I'm 100% a lawyer. 
Then from, you know, I go to pick my son from school mm -hmm. and from 3.30 till 9 o'clock at night, full-time mother. Yes. So that balance is very important and, and it's very nice. I know your husband's a great cook. So how much <laughs> cooking does he do, really do at home? <laughs> yes, he is a great cook and a great help and, uh, you know, a hands-on father. Yeah. And we have our days of cooking. Usually the weekend it's him to cook. Sunday breakfast is totally on him. And we do the full English breakfast where he does the full English breakfast. Yes, so he does cook and it's a very nice um, meals, you know. <laughs> okay, cool. So before we go on to our final question, I want to put you in the hot seat. And I got some gossip from your mom. <laughs> yes. And uh, so I got some information from her and I want to ask you and your answer should be either true or false. Okay. okay. So um, the first one is, uh, your favorite color is red. False. Which one is it? Blue. Mm. <laughs> Mummy's right. So your favorite food is jalebi? False. <laughs> What's it going to be? Chicken. <laughs> Mummy was right again. Now, uh, you got married on Christmas Day. True. Take me back. How back was it? Uh, 2009. Okay, yes. excellent. And uh, she said, um, well, let's see if it's true or false in this one. You won the best reader award in standard two. True. I must tell you, your mom was extremely proud of you. And she said, is she this, is she that? And oh, I was wow. like, this is such yes. a beautiful thing, you know, yeah. to hear from the mom. So let's come to the final question. What has been your crossover moment so far in your professional career? For me, Harleen, I think it was opening up my law firm. Mm -hmm. It was something that was very unplanned. It was something that I had never thought of. Uh, I mean, if somebody had asked me five years back, what would you do in five years? I would not have said open up my own law firm. And like most young entrepreneurs, I had not even had any savings. It was just something I spontaneously did because I had a young family. Um, and I used to initially work from coffee houses because I didn't even have an office. So, you know, it was something that got me going. And once I've started, I think it's, it's no looking back. I think uh, you've spoken like a true entrepreneur. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you for sharing your beautiful story and I wish you all the very best. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for watching and if you're catching this episode for the very first time, then subscribe to our channel to catch many more inspiring stories. Don't forget to follow us on our Facebook, Twitter and Instagram pages too. We're all about connecting brands. This is Crossover with me, Harleen Jubal.